My fiance, 27 female, and I, 30 male, are getting married next year. I've pretty much let her run the show when it comes to the wedding and reception. Her last name is from her biological father, who left when she was two. Her mother remarried, and she said for years that she couldn't wait to get married to change it. I've heard about what a piece of garbage this guy is for six years. I am the last male to carry my name. There are only four people with the name, so it's always been important to me to pass it on to my children. She wants to get married in a Catholic church. I'm not Catholic, but it means a lot to her. So I'm in the process of converting. She wanted to be close to her mom and sister. So I left a job I loved, found a new job, and we moved four hours away from my family to be closer to them. Her sister is a recovering alcoholic, so we don't keep liquor in our apartment despite the fact that I like to have a beer after work. I've made many changes to accommodate her. She's acknowledged this, and I always respond that all I care about is passing my name on, and she responds with the number of days until our wedding. Shortly after we arrived, BioDad contacted her out of the blue. He heard from relatives she was getting married and decided it was the perfect time to reconnect. All of a sudden, I now hear what a wonderful guy Paul is, how hard he's trying, and how wonderful it is that he's back. Often I get home from work, and she's gone, only to arrive home past midnight after being out with Paul and her half-siblings. I hate that I don't see her as much, but I know how much it means to her to have a relationship with him. At the same time, after years of hearing her trash him, I'm not even allowed to think bad thoughts about him. She's planning on having him walk her down the aisle, which I don't think is appropriate, but it's her decision. This end was the bombshell. This stung severely. I replied that it was her choice. I just wanted to pass my name down. She smiled uncomfortably and informed me that she wanted the first boy to carry her name because it would mean so much to daddy. I told her that was not happening. She suggested that we hyphenate as a compromise. I told her that there was no negotiation, that I had one thing that was important to me. I'd moved heaven and earth to give her what she needed and everything else, but I wouldn't budge an inch on this. She told me I was being unreasonable. I responded that I've been in her life longer than he has and asked her who she was trying to start a life with, me or him. She started crying and accused me of jealousy of her relationship with her father. My parents and her mom and stepdad agree with me and think she's allowing Paul to influence her. Her sister thinks I was an idiot for asking that question and refusing to compromise. Not the idiot. Seeing as you've bent over backward and done your absolute best to give her everything she wants and hopes for, including converting, I don't think it's unreasonable at all for you to have one thing that you want and wish for. Relationships should be about compromising both ways, not only about one person giving in on everything. Perhaps she's too used to getting her way with you in the end. It's not just about the last name. It's about accommodation. This, it's interesting that so many aspects of your life, such as where you live, having to convert so she can be married in a Catholic church, and now with the surname issue, are being driven by what she wants. I hate to tell you, but it's never going to change. She will always expect you to give in to her wishes. She does not know the meaning of the word compromise. And this situation with her bio dad is just plain weird. I would suggest that you take a big step back and think about if all of this is really what you want for your life. You should have a life partner, not a life dictator. You are not the idiot. Her idea of compromise is you do what she wants. There are more red flags here than in Fenway Park. Your fiancé is irrational and inflexible. I get that she's been hurt by Paul, and his magical reappearance here must be beyond a delight for her. But she needs to work through the abandonment and his sudden reemergence in her life in therapy, not at the altar. So I think you need to put the engagement on hold or call it off and schedule an appointment with a counselor. If she refuses to go, then there's your answer. My boyfriend, 23, of seven years, recently started playing a new game called Black Desert. First, I want to preface the fact that he's not addicted to playing video games and we both have a healthy, balanced routine. I, 22 female, had only ever heard of the game he was playing in passing, and I don't have much interest in gaming in the first place, but we have a few games we play together, and I thought I might as well try the game with him. However, 
After I start and finish a few quests, I meet up with him in game, and I'm met with almost a mirror image of myself. The model wasn't perfect, obviously, but the character looked almost exactly like me, down to the facial structure and body type. I was very reasonably creeped out, and I asked him why he had gone out of his way to make a character out of me. His weird explanation was that, if I have to look at a character model while I play a game, why not look at someone I already find hot? I said that he was creepy and obsessive, and that I needed a bit of distance, so I've been staying at a friend's place for about two to three hours. I just can't get the picture out of my head of my boyfriend spending hours creating a lifelike sculpture of me in a character creation menu. I'm starting to feel a bit bad for how I reacted, though. So, am I the idiot? Okay, it was going to be no idiots here, but... Yeah, seven years together? And after seven years, he decides he'd rather look at you in a game than look at some random female character he made? Like, that's really kind of sweet, since it means he doesn't even want a fantasy to look at. He wants to see you being the strong warrior he has to stare at for hours at a time. The way you reacted is pretty bad. You're being an idiot about it. Heck, I bet he's even feeling hurt by that. If anything, since someone he's been with for seven years just called him a creep for not wanting to stare at Big Boobs McGee like 90% of other guys, but instead at his girlfriend. You are the idiot, OP. Agree. We all get to set our own boundaries, but you're so creeped out by a video game character that your boyfriend of seven years made to look like you that you can't be in the same house as him? That does not seem reasonable. I don't actually think it's reasonable to be creeped out by this at all. I find it cute when my husband makes characters that look like me. I don't think of it as him trying to be me, just that I'm a convenient visual reference and that even years later he still finds me attractive. I see it as a compliment. I'm not prepared to call you not the idiot because you may have a reason for feeling so bothered. I.e. maybe you once had a stalker who took pictures of you without your consent. But I don't think many people with committed SOs would consider this creepy at all. Unless there's more context, I do believe you're overreacting somewhat. My boyfriend, 42, father of Megan, teen, and I, 37 widow with twins, have been together for two years now. He's awesome. We don't live together, but we see each other a lot. My girls love him, and we've quickly become one family. However, Megan and I have a bit of tension between us, but we're working on it. Last week, I arranged a backyard cookout with family and friends. I've invited my boyfriend and Megan. He accepted the invitation, but Megan was like, hmm, cookout, not sure, meat and whatnot. She's 100% vegan and goes by the nickname Megan the Vegan. Anyway, she said she wasn't coming and I said, no problem. So I got busy with guests and the main dish was grilled chicken shawarma. To my surprise, Megan showed up with her boyfriend and went straight to sit with her phone watching YouTube. I asked my boyfriend why he didn't give me the heads up, and he said he called, but clearly, my phone was inside the entire time. Everyone grabbed their plates, and I started serving them shawarma one by one. Then Megan showed up in front of me, extending her empty plate to fill it. I felt confused at first. I asked if she was going to have shawarma like the others, and she said, ew, no and proceeded to say she expected me to have something vegan to grill. I was like, I'm sorry, what's that? She made a face and went on a long detailed explanation about vegan grill recipes that I could have made to include her in the gathering. I said I didn't even know she was coming, let alone knowing she wanted a specific vegan grill recipe. I said shawarma was all I had and directed her towards salads and appetizers to choose from, but she pitched a hissy fit about how I made zero effort to include her in the party. Even worse, I was basically forcing her to eat shawarma by not preparing a vegan recipe for her, knowing she's vegan and can't eat meat. I argued that this wasn't true and that it wasn't my fault she decided to show last minute and at least could have brought something to eat. She said, Daddy called you like a hundred times already and you probably purposely avoided answering since you probably had nothing prepared for me and didn't even want me to come in the first place. She put the plate down and sat watching us eat, saying I excluded her from even sitting at the table with us, 
Even though she said she didn't want to sit and watch us eat meat, it was not cool. Mood 100% ruined. She refused to speak to me or say goodbye before leaving. She just kept claiming I made her go hungry at my home and disrespected her lifestyle by indirectly forcing meat on her. My boyfriend said it was just miscommunication, but I stated that I'm not required to cook for her. She wanted me to apologize for the poor experience, but I refused. Not the idiot. Welcome to the teenage years. Her father should have handled her attitude, and he doesn't strike me as the sharpest knife in the drawer. Okay, so he calls OP a bunch of times to say he's bringing his daughter, never actually speaks to OP to confirm if his messages were received, and then just crosses his fingers and shows up empty-handed, hoping for the best? How difficult would it have been for him to grab some vegan food just in case? You are the idiot. How often do you cook for the family? It seems odd that you've been together for two years and you say you've never prepared a meal for his daughter? Also, do you have vegan foods on hand for her you could have offered? Again, after two years together, that would seem natural. Agree. OP, you're the idiot here. You made zero effort to include her, and you seem just as happy for her not to come. And that's crappy. To me, her saying not sure, meat and whatnot, was a clear opening for you to make an offer to have something for her. But you chose not to. So my younger brother, Matt, never had the best relationship with me or my younger sister growing up. This is because of my parents and their mistreatment of my sister and me and their use of him as an excuse for it. I'm nine years older than Matt and my sister is eight years older. Matt has a form of high functioning autism. We've known this since he was about two years old. Ever since my parents found this out, they have used him as an excuse to avoid any responsibilities and gain as much sympathy and handouts as possible claiming that caring for Matt was a massive job that took their attention 24-7. A big aspect of this was that they neglected my sister and me at every available opportunity. They never once attended anything for my sister or me. They refused to be there in any aspect, emotionally or physically, for either of us. The truth about it, though, was that Matt required nowhere near the amount of attention they claimed. Once he entered elementary school, he had no behavior issues and was very self-sufficient. Yet my parents would use him as an excuse for everything. They even once refused to pick my sister up when she was abandoned by friends almost 20 miles away, claiming Matt needed them here when he was fast asleep. We also both went through massive depressive bouts and were told by our parents that they didn't have time for our problems because of Matt. Finally, towards the end of my time living with my parents, my extended family slowly cut my parents out once they learned the extent of their lies regarding Matt. Suffice to say, this destroyed our relationship with Matt. For a long time, my sister and I despised him. Even today, our sister outright refuses to talk to him or our parents, only communicating with me. I am in low contact with the parents, but I realized long ago that Matt was blameless in this situation and taking out my anger towards my parents on him was wrong. So around the time he entered college, I reached out and started a relationship with him. Out of nowhere though, Matt asked me recently why my sister and I were so cold to him growing up. My sister nor I ever told him the truth, and seeing as he's an adult now, I decided he deserved the answer. So I told him that our parents are narcissists and exploited his autism as an excuse to neglect my sister and me. I told him how they left my sister 20 miles from home at night with no way home and used him as an excuse. He became very livid and confronted my parents about this. My parents have lost their minds now. They're accusing me of trying to ruin their relationship with Matt and claiming that I'm nothing more than an entitled brat. Sister as well has begun blowing me up, claiming that I need to stop opening old wounds and dropped contact altogether or stop involving her in this. Not the idiot. I have no sympathy for your parents. Continue to cut them off. If you told him your feelings just to cause a rift, then you would be the idiot. But I think it was probably beneficial to Matt. He probably spent a lot of time wondering what he did wrong or what was wrong with him, that his siblings hated him. Knowing that it was not about him or something he had done will probably go a long way about making him feel happier 
and more confident in general. I agree. Maybe he wasn't mistreated to the same extent as his siblings, but his parents used him as a pawn, lied to him, degraded him, and ruined his relationship with his siblings. He's a victim too, and deserved to know the truth. You don't owe it to your parents to keep whom they hurt and how a secret. Not the idiot, OP, but your sister's right that it's long been time to go full no contact. Good on Matt for standing up for you two. Not sure why your sister isn't interpreting it that way, except this is still incredibly painful for her. And because of that, please engage with her. Get her to open up to you. You all should seek some counseling individually and together. Maybe all three of you can go one day when she's worked through it and is more comfortable. I have an old college friend, Nick, 32 male. He has a fiance, Sophie, 24. They've been together three years and Nick has repeatedly suggested an open relationship to which Sophie has refused until a few months ago when he said he'd only propose if she agreed to try an open relationship. She agreed. I said to him at the time that he was an idiot for it and he said he was just acting in his best interest. Now, Nick wanted an open relationship so he could see Anna, 29, a girl we knew from college who he always had a thing for. But she was married from him when she was 18 to 26, so he never had a chance till recently. He hasn't had a chance to see her yet because she had been living with her sick mom and they can't afford to rent a hotel room. Now, the issue is that Nick showed up at my house last weekend with a suitcase, livid, and asked to crash on my couch. He said Sophie had gone out to dinner and had intimacy with a male model and that she was cheating because he hadn't had the chance to see Anna and it was unfair for her to see someone so much hotter than Anna, not that Anna isn't attractive. I had basically laughed at him and told him this is exactly what was going to happen and that he was being selfish, expecting Sophie not to see anyone or to see people less attractive than her. She's very attractive and I don't know why she's with Nick, to be honest. He went off on me for not being supportive and stormed out and is trying to turn our friend group against me for not supporting him. I've taken a few days to think about it, but I still can't decide. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. He needs no sympathy. He had a woman in mind when he asked and requested an open relationship to keep Sophie as a backup if this thing with Anna didn't work out. He probably thought Sophie wasn't hot enough to get someone or thought Sophie would be so in love with him she wouldn't take advantage of what is frankly his demand. Oh man, I hope he ends up without Sophie or Anna. I think you should lay it out to your friends group, the scam he was perpetrating on the woman in his life, and how whiny and idiot he was when his scam blew up in his face. Your friend group is stupid too if they play along. There's no need to support anyone who pulls such a crappy move, and I hope she manages to dodge this bullet. Not the idiot. Dude didn't want an open relationship. He just wanted permission to cheat. I hope Sophie has realized that the grass is greener on the other side. Wanting an open relationship because one person from your past is now single is a huge red flag. You are not the idiot for pointing out that Nick got what he asked for.